Before the pastor comes. Scripture reading. Good morning, church. The scripture reading this morning is taken from Philippians chapter 1, from verse 12 to 18. Now I want you to know, brothers, that what, is, what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace, palace guard, and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. Because of my chains, most of the brothers in the, in the Lord have been encouraged to speak the word of God more courageously and fearlessly. It is true that some preach Christ out of envy and revelry, but others out of goodwill. The latter do so in love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former pe preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely supposing that they can stir up trouble for me while I am in chains. Would you read the last verse with me? But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached, and because of this, I rejoice. Amen. Amen. Let's welcome our pastor as he brings the word to us this morning. Morning. Wanna Good morning. Thank Sister Susan and the worship team for leading us before the throne of God. There's nothing like praising God in spirit and in truth. God demands the best that we can give him. Because he's the one who supplies the means. This morning I want to share a message. Um, as usual, Sister Olivia will have the notes and stuff for us. But I want to pray this morning. So bow with me. Father, we give you thanks. That this whole exercise is not really about us. It's about you. It's about what you did for us on the cross of Calvary through your son, Jesus Christ. It's about cleansing us. It's about, it's about calling us out as a people to worship you in the beauty of holiness and to get the gospel message out to everyone who will believe. 
so that as they believe what you said, that they will come to a knowledge of who you really are. Your will is not to destroy us, but your will is to save us. Thank you for the opportunity that the Church of Christ Oysters has to proclaim the message of the gospel to the whole world, as it were. We give you praise and honor. I pray that this word this morning will touch hearts and minds and also the person who needs to give their life to you will say yes. Even before I am through. That they will give a saint to you and what you've offered them and they'll reach out their hearts to you and reach out their hands to you and receive your special gift. So this day we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Please um, take your seats. There is tremendous turmoil around the world today. Um, it doesn't matter where you go, there's some kind of war, some kind of faction going on. This is a, a period in time where anything that can be destabilized will be destabilized. But the church stands out as champion. Come on, you're not talking to me. The church stands out as the champion. Because Jesus Christ is our champion. If the church were up to all of us without Jesus Christ, it would fail. But the church can never fail. I will build my church, he says, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So there's, there's assurance in the fact that because the church belongs to Jesus Christ, those of us who are the church, we are secured. Hey, come on. Not all the insurance that is on your person and property matches up to all the assurance that God gives us in Jesus Christ. So that's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about the means by which God has employed us to get the message of the gospel out. So the Apostle Paul is sitting in a prison cell. He was in Caesarea under arrest. And then he comes over to Rome. And he's, the title was Lock Up, but not Locked Down. Locked Up. The keys were turned on the door, but his spirit was free. And the Spirit of God was working on him to bring to memory what God told him. So he's writing. He is writing, he, he is writing to the church at Philippi to encourage them about not only existing in the circumstances, let me say that again, not, not just existing in the circumstances that they find themselves in, but to live and to thrive. How many of you remember Star Trek? Some of our people as old as me remember Star Trek. And it, and it, and it, and it had, and it had a, an introduction like this. Space. The final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. To seek out new civilizations. To boldly go where no man has gone before. That's the mission of the Apostle Paul that he accepted from God. 
That's the mission that has been given to us to boldly go. Not thinking about your life and your circumstances. We serve a God who is able to supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. So you lack nothing. I lack nothing as a believer in Jesus Christ. If he is supplier, his well never runs dry. So the Apostle Paul is sitting in the prison. And rather than wondering what's going to happen, rather than sitting down and reminiscing and all the beatings that he got and stuff of that, like that, he allowed the Holy Spirit to take control of him. How many of you know that the only one who really has um, any kind of relationship with the Holy Spirit to get a proper download is who? The believer. Because you have inside connection. Come on. You know, there are some people who turn up for a job uh, and uh, application going out. 90 people turn up. But you know, it doesn't matter about the other 89. There's one body with connection on the inside. And when you go, you're not worried because you already know your connection. And when everybody is waiting, you say, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. People looking at you funny. Excuse me, excuse me, because you know where you're going. You, you got connection. The Apostle Paul had that type of connection. Connection with an awesome God who had brought him from being Saul, the persecutor, to Paul, the evangelist. And he has gone through tremendous trials, physical trials, emotional trials, all kinds of trials. And he gets to the place where he is soon going to die. One of the greatest trials that we go through, transitions that we go through, not only because we've never been dead before, so we don't know what it's what's like. You see other people die around us. We buried um, uh, members of a family and stuff like that. But, but we don't know. But in the midst of all of that, in the midst of all the thoughts he had for all the churches that he helped establish, he could still focus on the future. And all around him, all the elite, Roman guards that were there. He preached to them. He talked to them. He showed them the worthy way of living. Not with a sword or a shield. Not that kind. But with the sword of the spirit. Which is the word of God. And as a matter of fact. Palace. And the emperor's uh, palace guards that were there, they were so encouraged and inspired by the man. He is supposed to be dangerous, but they're not seeing even a glimpse of him being dangerous. Because the danger that we carry is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and going against the enemy of our souls. So that when we, when we go, when we put, our, put on the full armor of God. Come to Bible study. We're doing that. The full armor of God from head to toe. Then you qualify to be able to go against principalities and powers that are infinitely more strong than you are. But with the help of Almighty God, two things. Spirit of God and the sword of God. And God is able 
to bring hardened, ungodly men to their knees. Sister, so, so what we have just gone on with all the other stuff so that people can get something to write. So I got this thought from Star Trek to boldly go where no man has gone before. Let me ask one more question before I go on. Who are those people who get all the special acclaims in, 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 um, in the world? Who, who are those people? The, the, Nobel, the Nobel Prize people. What, what do they do? What, what do they accomplish? To give them something so as a Nobel Peace Prize. Come talk to me. What have some of them done, some of those people done, to be given such a prestigious prize? Come on, Mr. Pat, you always come to the class. And our Bible study time. They have to produce something that the world needs. Penicillin, something that will stop, something that would destroy the world from making ground something that is potent enough to take it out. So just like those who received the Nobel Peace Prize for their inventions, we didn't invent anything. God has freely given us his word and his spirit to do even greater exploits than those who came up with an idea, serviced the world with an idea, and then they died, and they're gone. Because I don't care what the Nobel Peace Prize winners have produced, it comes to pass. Because all, all of the drama that we have had for the last three, four years, Somebody had to come up with something new. And when they came up with something new, this thing evolved. And they had to come up with something newer. Oh, but this morning, what we have, who we are carrying, the message that we have is more powerful than anything that any Nobel Peace Prize or uh, uh, whatever. A winner has come up with. It is a glorious gospel of Jesus Christ that on, not only transforms minds, transforms hearts, transforms families, transforms everything around us. The glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. So, what's our first responsibility? To go to people. The greatest call on our life is not what we did here in the last hour. We are called to do that too. And that's important. Worshiping God. That's where you start. That's where you, but that's not where you remain consistently. Get up. Go out. Go to people. Go ye into all the world. Don't preach to your dog. That, that's a different thing. You can talk to your dog. You can do all kinds of stuff. Blah, blah, blah. But people. People like you and me. Who need the Savior like you and I needed the Savior. The one thing that will set us for life so that we can live under any circumstance is the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ in our minds and hearts, helping to change and transform our lives by the help of the Holy Spirit. That's priority. I will give me some to sing. If you are not walking the walk that Jesus walked, 
if not taking the initiative that the Apostle Paul took, if you're not going out and multiplying yourself, then you have failed or you're failing. Let's get number two. Not only go, sometimes you get afraid. Because you see somebody that looks tough. Most people that look tough are lambs. They got a big voice because they're scared. You got you to be very careful with the quiet ones. Communicate with people. Engage them in the sharing the gospel. Sharing the gospel includes communication. But communicating what? The word of God. So that people will understand where they are in sin and where they ought to be in Christ. And the gospel of Jesus Christ has the power to change and transform lives. Look at me now. For what I was before, look at yourself now. At the drop of the hat, some of you would But look at you now. I thank God that I am who I am right now. And that's only by the grace of Almighty God. And I can communicate the new me to people around who knew the old me. So that when I say, hey, Pearson, that's you. And I say, yeah, that me by the grace of God. By the grace of God. That's what. I communicate now because there has been a tremendous shift that has taken place in my life. Let's go. So it involves communication. L listen, we talk. You see your phone or tablet? You know how much you talk on that? Have you ever tried to calculate the amount of time you spend on this? No. Go back and count all the WhatsApps that you got from 2019 till now. You can't. Go back. You, you'll be in real trouble. I dare you, though. Go back. Go back. How much of that communication was actually communicating the word of God and the will of God? to somebody who needed the Savior. They didn't really need that little information about that new soup that you saw. Or that new dress. Or that, or that, or that new game that was played at your watch. And you have a moratorium on it afterwards. It's about communicating the gospel message. Get it? Number two, communicate with people. Engage them. Engage them. Stand up and talk with them. Uh, one of the things I admire, things I admire about the Joseph is, it's not they make a presence felt. Whether you believe what they're communicating is, is contrary to what you understand or no? They pretend to present themselves because they 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 actually believe that they can get some extra credit from God for doing that. It may be the right motivation for doing it, but it is getting the job done. So, so people must focus upon and then understand the gospel to respond to it. So your responsibility and my responsibility is to know the truth of the gospel so that when we lay it out before people, people can say, boy, that kind of look pretty all right. You know, they can say good up front. That look. All right, it sounds 
all right. And I don't repeat ten of that to the same people will give them a greater understand then because we will make it clear to them that this is the way. There's only one way. Because there's only one name with power to save. He signed that. He signed that. So we need to make it as clear as possible that people will listen to it. Oh, I know you, you have these, had these notes some other time before, whatever. But I want to remind us of, of, of those elementary things. Let's go on. So people will listen. Even if they blank you afterwards, they'll listen. Go ahead, sister. What else can we share this morning? Second Corinthians gives us a motive. Knowing, therefore, that the terror of the Lord, the terror of the Lord, we do what? What's the motive? The terror of the Lord. If you, if you are in, you were, if you were in my house, now I said, Peter, uh, when it was 11, 12, that kind of year, so. You would know the terror of your parents. Listen carefully. And it did not matter that there were 11 of us. My father was big to the task of administering punishment. I told you before that I rather my father beat me than my mother. Because my mother with her emotional self would beat and stop counting. But my father was always measured and precise. It didn't matter how many he had to whip. He was always measured and precise. And you remember them, the licks then, for a couple of days. Since then, we know what is to, uh, what it is to fear the Lord. What? We try to do what? So if somebody does not believe what you say, go back to them. Text them. Email them. Pass on by the house again. Ease off and give them a little time to ponder. Go back. Text them again. If you get a response then, go around. You got a lot of time, I still think about you. That's all it is. I just think about you. You just come to my mind, so I just decide to go past. So, 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 so you you are encouraging them to free up a little bit more space, so that so that so that you can get at least a two in the door and change. So we know what it is to fear the Lord. We know what it is to fear punishment for not doing what is right. And the Apostle Paul says what? I want to I wanna do what? I want to plant on your conscience this particular thought that the terror of the Lord is there for those who do not accept his son, Jesus Christ, as Lord, and humble themselves, falling at his feet, accepting him as Lord and personal Savior. So I, I don't want to, I don't want to think, if you're a little child, I want you to understand. If you're an adolescent, I want you to understand. If you are an adult, I want you to understand. So every level, I am going to tailor make it for you so that you cannot say that you don't understand or nobody told you. That's what he is about. That's what we ought to be about as believers. Go ahead, sister. Knowing therefore, or right, thirdly, third point, relate to people. 
Effective witness involves what? Not only the what? The transmission. That is you speaking out of biblical information. So we can talk the Bible from now till the cows come home. It also includes what? Establishing a relationship with the other person. Jesus was out and about on one day. 15 to 20,000 people gathered around him. They were listening to him who was the bread of life. As somewhere in John chapter 6. And I thought about it, so I just put it in. And 15 to 20,000 people are hungry. But they are, they are mesmerized by his words. Because no one has ever taught them like that man. One of his disciples said, wait, 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 wait. Jesus, you, you got all these people around you. Where are we going to get money to buy food for all of these people? And Jesus says, in my paraphrase, not a problem. Find out where you got among the crowd. How much did he find? Five by loaves and uh, two small fish. And they said, with a reason, that is not enough. That is not enough. And sometimes we turn up with our Christian selves and we engage people, and then a spirit of fear comes over us, and somebody tells you, or me. I'm not, I'm not enough. Well, you are never enough. But it's God in you. That is enough. And we meet certain people and we say, no, they won't listen. How do you know? You might be just the right person that they need to hear at that particular point in time to stop somebody from going and doing something stupid. Like commit suicide. Like going get in something and get, go to prison and stuff like that. You and I are always enough when we have the presence and power of the word and the Holy Spirit in us. So never doubt your ability. So it, it also includes establishing a relationship with the other person. Hearts as well as heads must meet reason and emotion. So this is what the Apostle Paul writes. So affectionately longing for you, Paul said to what? The Thessalonians, we were well pleased to import, let's go on, to you or inform you not only the good news of God, but also what? Our lives, because you have become dear to us. That's a relationship that was established with a group of people, started a church, and now we read the Thessalonian letter that Paul is writing back from lockdown. He's writing to them, telling them the importance that they have been had been to him. Sometimes the little thing that you do goes a whole lot farther than you believe it will go. And sometimes, you know the song, memories don't leave like people do. They always stay with you. And you know the rest of the song. As long as it is in your memory, when it gets to your heart, you feel the necessity of acting out whatever the Holy Spirit brings back to your memory. Here, in this particular situation, the apostle needed a moment 
because chances are he was going through something. Incidentally, as a believer, you and I know that there are certain times that the enemy will come back and bombard you with a lot of memories that you don't need at that particular moment in time. But hallelujah, when God has done something special for you, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Holy Spirit does what? Raise up a standard. What's the standard? The word of God. And he fights for you. He fights for me. He fights for all of us. Because memories don't leave like people do. Now, another sermon for another time. But I want us to understand that it doesn't matter where you've been, what you've been through. As a believer in Jesus Christ, God has already brought closure to it. Find God. If you're still wrestling with whatever it is, come to God. Fall on your face. Go in your bedroom. Cry. Let it snot run up to your nose and all kinds of stuff because nobody is seeing. Release it. And God is able to give you the release you need. So he remembers these people. He remembers about sharing the gospel with these people. Sharing what he had. Let me put this point in here. God does not expect you to share what you don't have. He would be an unkind God. Fourthly, remove barriers. You and I have some people that we won't get close to them with a five foot, five foot pole. They said ten foot, but I said five. We have some people that we have a off there, right? Come on, not with me. So people that you don't particularly like, or you wouldn't particularly go around, or engage them in conversation. I write, I know I write, you're silent, I write. That becomes a barrier. And you're talking about a barrier between you and that person, but I'm talking about a barrier between you and God. Because it might very well be something that needs to be resolved. And the thing is, the thing has already been resolved already. All oh, God needs for you is to move. And you'll get to your place here, realize we are one does sort of already. It doesn't need me. If God needed you to sort it out, he wouldn't sort it out himself. But he couldn't use you to sort it out. Because he knows that in sorting it out, you create more mess. Come on, I know, I know I'm talking to somebody today. And he goes ahead and sorts it out ahead of you. So that when you go, you don't have to say a word. It's all right. <laughs> it's all right. That, that's been taken care of. Because God intervened. The Apostle Paul is the same way. He's saying, remove barriers. Part of our responsibility involves what? Having the skill to do what? Eliminate obstacles. Remember, life is basically an obstacle race. You think that is you that planned your life. But it is God. God's the one who plans for us. So if you're walking, if you're running, if you're living, and something occurs, God knew that it was going to be there, and God has the ability to give you the strength in the moment to be successful. I think I said that earlier in another, in another way. So let's finish off, uh, Sister Olivia. Explain the gospel to others. We need an army of Christians today. 
and do what? Consistently and clearly present the message to as many as possible. Remember the story of Lydia? When he went to Lydia or passed across Lydia, it says what? It says nothing about the Apostle Paul opening up her heart. It says what? The Lord opened up her heart. It is not as much about you and me as it is about God. That's the point I want us to walk away from here with. It is not as much about you and I. Titles don't save people. It is God who brings salvation. He brought salvation through Jesus Christ. And it is God who completes the process of salvation. All we need to know is to show up. And show ourselves faithful. Lydia. Lydia. Worship team, get ready. Lydia. Lydia is the one. She's one of the examples. How many more persons have turned up here over the years? And it wasn't one of us who said anything. How many of us? How many persons have turned up to this church, this building? And many remained. And it had nothing at all to do with a member. Because it is not about us. Final uh, slide, um, Sister Olivia. Make every effort by every means to do what? Establish them in the faith. If it means you have to spend money, do it. If you have to spend more time with that person, of course, carry along another person with you, do that. But do not hold back the gifts that God has placed in you for the particular soul that will come to you. Ground them in the scripture. Help them gain assurance of their what? Salvation. And get them active in some kind of Fellowship. That's a lot. That's a lot. But it is possible. So I go back where I started. Space. The final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise to explore strange new worlds. New life and new civilizations to boldly go where no man has gone before. That should be our mantra that we adopt in going forward. Because at the end of the day, the only thing that will last for you and I as humans and as individuals permanently last will be our witness to the unsaved. Bring them to an understanding of Christ. 
and who he is and what he came to do. And then by us say, they say, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God and I accept him to be my Lord and Savior. And when that happens, heaven rejoices over one soul who enters the kingdom. I love singing. Yeah. Worshiping. Even dancing a little bit. But nothing is as important at the end of the day than a soul that is one for the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 15, we'll sing a song and close of all, us off. If you are here and you know that your relationship with the Lord is not as it ought to be or you're not even saved, that means that you've come and you've confessed the Lord Jesus Christ and you've been buried in Christian baptism. If you have not done that yet, now is the time to do it. Maybe you're here and you feel like you're a little bit cold and, 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 and you want to rekindle the fire. Come, let's pray for you too. That will work. Or... Whatever the situation is, come. It's ready for you. Stand with us this morning. The pastor has issued the challenge to us to go out and uh, win souls. That's our um, go where no one has gone before. That's our mission. This morning, some of us need to be renewed so that we can actually deliver on the mission. We don't work and don't get training and retraining. So this morning, the invitation is for us to be renewed and revived so that we can fulfill the mission of winning souls for Christ. So stand as we sing. We praise thee, O Lord, for the son of thy love.
a few persons have come this morning. The invitation was given. And Brother Adrian um, informed me that the majority have come for uh, general prayers. If a person comes for prayer, that means something is going on that they need help with. And I declare to you that our God is a very present help at times of trouble. And that's why, that's why it doesn't matter what it is. Our God is a fixer. He can fix it. So Brother Adrian is going to help me in the exercise. Let's pray. Father, we come to you today. There are several, several issues that are confronting your people today. Those who came and those who didn't come forward. But you are able to meet every one of us wherever we are. So this day, Lord, we give you praise and honor and glory. We establish you as King of kings and lords of lords in our minds and in our heart. And there is nothing too difficult for you to do. Each person who stands here are unique in their own way before you. And Father, as we lift up prayer for them, we know that you hear the prayers of your people. And this morning, we declare that no weapon that is formed against any one of these, from the littlest, youngest, to the oldest, we declare that you have an answer for them. For the little children, Sunday school age, Father, I pray that you and the instruction that they will receive, that you would continue to work on their minds and their hearts with the little incremental deposits that you, will fa that you are planting in their hearts. I pray that as they grow, that those deposits will gain interest. And as they go older and older and more mature, that the dividends will work a long way in helping them to be more established in this faith, this faith in your Son, Jesus Christ. Father, for those who will contemplate being baptized into Christ. Father, we thank you that this is a good step forward. Father, I also pray for those who have physical ailments. And as we touch and agree on Sister Sharon, we know that she has not been in the best health. Father, I pray that you will visit her as Jehovah Rapha. You are the God who heals us. And we know that you can do it. And we thank you for doing it. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Father, you know Sister Eunice. We thank you for her coming. Father, her body is not what it used to be. She is older as the process goes, but we thank you that by the blood of Jesus Christ, who was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities, chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with those stripes, Eunice is healed. We believe it, Lord. You told us to speak it. Any two agreeing concerning anything, you said, it shall be done. And you cannot rescind on your word. So, Father, we thank you 
that in this moment that you will grant her the desire of her heart. And we thank you for healing her. Stopping this spirit of infirmity from trying to take over her body. You've done it before. You can do it again. And we thank you for doing it again. In the name of Jesus. Right now? Mm -hmm. Father, Sharon number two has come. Father, she says she can't handle things by herself. And Father, we, we want to say to Sharon, God doesn't expect them, you to handle them by yourself. That's why he sent you to this congregation of people. Father, we pray even now, Lord, that this situation or these situations that your daughter Sharon is going through, you know them better than we do know them. You already have provided an answer. But Father, I pray that you will, by your Holy Spirit, will bring peace to her mind so that in those moments she will be able to hear clearly from you exactly what you want her to do. Father, we declare that no weapon that is formed against her is going to prosper. We cancel out every assignment of the enemy to try to hinder her from being all that you have called her to be. And this morning, we claim victory over the enemy in Jesus' mighty name. And we thank you for doing it. Amen, amen, amen. Father God, we, we give you thanks and we give you praise and honor and worship and glory and adoration. Father, these children, your children, have come before you today seeking your face. Your word reminds us, your word encourages us that all who are weary or burdened, heavy laden, that they should come, come to you, and they will find the rest. So, Father, we lean on that word this morning. We comfort ourselves with that word this morning. And we especially, Lord, lift their three young people here before you this morning. And your word also encourages us and reminds us that we should suffer the little children to come. Yes. And so this morning, Lord, we call them by name, DeAndre and Kira and Akila. And Lord, we thank you that there are courageous enough to seek you. That they understand the Lord, even in this confusing and complicated world in which they are living. That they understand that through all the smoke and haze and maze, that they understand enough to seek you. So Lord, we pray this morning for a big blessing for these children. We pray that you will hedge them, protect them, guard them, guide them, lead them, strengthen them. We know, Lord, there are challenges aplenty that they will face. Challenges, Lord, that we ourselves as adults perhaps didn't have to deal with at their age. But, oh, Lord, we pray that you will cover them as a hen covers her chicks. Father, we pray that you will cover these children. That when the enemy seeks to distract them, destroy them, lead them astray, that they will know to turn to you, the Alpha and the Omega. You, Lord, who are the author and the finisher of their faith. We lift them to you now, Lord. 
And we pray that you will protect them and that no harm will come to them. We pray too, Lord, for those who are charged with their welfare, their parents, their teachers, their aunts, their uncles, their mothers, their fathers, their godparents, their next door neighbor. We pray, Lord, that you will cause those in charge and who are responsible for these children to know and understand that you are watching and that you will hold them accountable. So, Father, we thank you for these children. We pray that you will bless them, bless and keep them. And I pray, Lord, no harm will come nigh their house. Hallelujah. We just give you thanks for them and for them that they've come. Lord, Sister Sharon is here standing in the gap for her sister Yvette, who is troubled, Lord. She is troubled. But Lord, your word assures us, your word reminds us that when trouble comes like a flood, you will stand up. You will raise up a standard. And Lord, we remember Nehemiah. And when he was troubled by Sambalat and Tobias, and he said, you know, I will not be distracted. I have a good work to do, and I will not be distracted. I'm not coming down. And Lord, he went on to, mm, Father, he went on to build. He refused to come down off that wall. He was building with his with one hand, and he was battling with the next. So, Father, we, we, we pray for, for Yvette, Sharon's sister, and we pray, Lord, that she will not come down from the good work that she is doing, even though she may be distracted, even though there may be trouble on either side. We pray, God, that you will Keep her, remind her, encourage her, strengthen her. Thank you for our sister who is prepared to stand for her, Lord. Thank you for Sharon. So, Lord, we thank you for Sister Denise. And she has come this morning, Lord, just to hear from you, just to be touched by you. Father, for healing in her knees. Your word reminds us that by the blood of Jesus Christ, we are healed. There is healing in the blood. And so, Lord, Father, this morning we pray for healing for Denise's knees, and we claim it. We call it down in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for how you have been faithful all these years to her. And I pray, God, that she will remember she will be reminded of your faithfulness, of your goodness, and of your healing. So, Father, we thank you this morning for your goodness towards us. We thank you for your faithfulness. And we declare your name is to be glorified. To God be the glory. Great things you have done. So we thank you, Lord, that we can call on your name today. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen, amen and amen. Please be seated. Good morning, and thank you for worshiping with us this morning. The flags you see there represent our virtual audience, and to you we say welcome because we love to have visitors, and we've been having a lot of visitors the past couple days. So tell your friends about us. We're easy to find. Just look up Church of Christ Oysters on our YouTube channel, and we'll be right there. And also we'll do a rebroadcast this afternoon. So now for the announcements for October 16th, 2022. Uh, for those of you that are reading through the Bible with us, we're trying to read through the entire Bible for the year 2022. Today's reading is Mark chapters 6 and 7. 
Sunday School will be following immediately after today's service. Uh, Sunday night service, our Bible Institute, will be at 6 o'clock. And you can find the invite for that on our Church of Christ information channel. Uh, we'll be studying the book of Acts, so please join us on that. Now, Wednesday night is our Wednesday night fellowship. That's 7.30 p.m. And this past Wednesday, we had a special session. We had a prayer session, and we talked about the schools here in Barbados. We talked about the CSE, which is the Comprehension, Comprehensive Sex Education that is used here in Barbados. And I'm sure you've been reading in the papers about the fiasco of some of the questions that were asked for um, a computer science course. They started talking about sexuality. I have a clip that I want to play, and I'll tell you what our plan of action is. And the voice that you will hear will be Dr. Veronica Evelyn. And she will explain. The relative form of sex education based on the notion that sex is non-binary and gender is fluid. That is, that there is not just male and female, but any number of sexes in between. And that a person can be male today, female tomorrow, both male and female the next day, and neither male nor female the day after, depending on how they identify. So we talked at length on Wednesday night about CSE, and we talked about some of the questions they were going to ask, and all of the people that were at that meeting, that special meeting, were appalled. But the question comes, what are we going to do about it? Are we going to sit by and idly fold our hands and not do anything like they do in the United States or like they do in the UK, saying, well, that's just the way it is. There's nothing we can do about it. And my answer to that is no. We do have a plan of action that was um, put together by the people that met on Sunday night and more or less directed by Dr. Evelyn, and here's our five-point approach, what we're going to do about this. Number one, we're going to pray. Of course we're going to pray. We've been praying, and we ask that you continue to pray. Number two is that we're going to petition the government. Now, we're putting together a letter that should be ready by next week that we will take to the uh, members of, of Parliament, um, who is it? Um, a, pardon me? Uh, Ralph Thorne, the Honorable Ralph Thorne and Abrams. So we're going to carry letters to them. And we'll, once that letter is constructed, we're going to have everyone that agrees with us. And if you're saved, I know you will. If you're a Christian, I know you will. If you're concerned about your children, I know you will, or your grandchildren, or your nephews, or your nieces, you'll be wanting to sign this letter that we will walk to them and present this letter to them. There's also a petition that's going around to stop the CSE, the Com Comprehensive Sex Education Program that they're using now. We'll put that on the chat where you can sign this competition, um, this petition to get it stopped. And the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to prioritize our Sunday school. Because they should first hear from their parents about sex education. Um, that's where they should hear it from first. But we want to give them a biblical perspective of sex education. There's male and there's female. You can't change who you are because of the way you feel one day or 
for whatever reason th these crazy people are doing that, we're going to uh, put a priority, priority on teaching our Sunday school children. There's not many that we have here right now, but that doesn't matter. We're gonna teach those that are here the word of God. And lastly, we will encourage, if you have young kids or if you have um, children at your house, that you do your devotions with your children. So make sure that your children, your grandchildren, know the word of God. So that's what we plan to do. We're not gonna sit idly by. We have a plan of action. We're gonna put that plan of action in place now. I, in fact, heard about, um, what was the gentleman's name on brass tacks? Peter Wickham. After I heard Peter Wickham, and thank you, Sister Clover, after I heard the way that Peter Wickham treated Dr. Evelyn, I wrote Brass Tax a letter. I'm not standing idly by. I sent them an email letting them know that I was just appalled by his treatment of Dr. Evelyn. Now, I have, I've heard since, I, haven't, I don't know for sure, that he's no longer going to be a moderator at Brass Tax. And for that, we say thank God. So we're not sitting idly by. We're going to be active. We're going to be effective. Amen? So that letter should be here next week. We'll play the clip again next week, and we'll ask that all Christians, all people that are concerned about their children, sign that letter. We'll be funeral services for Sister Falma Smith. That'll be on Thursday, October 20th at 1 o'clock p.m. It's going to be at the prerogative worship center now they have a special request and that is is that they want to do a procession so if you are able to go to the funeral and if you are able to walk um, they're going to do about a 10-minute procession it's going to be on foot and they're going to walk to the saint jude's anglican church cemetery and that's for the burial so have your shoes with you if you're able to uh, be a part of that uh, procession. That's something that's often done, um, especially in the states, in New Orleans. They, they have uh, processions for marriages, for funerals, for birthdays, but that's what um, the family would like to do. So if you come, make sure you bring some walking shoes if you are able to, to walk. It's a 10 minute walk, it's gonna be hot, so bring some water, bring a hat, or umbrella, and all of those things. Uh, final reminder, well not a final reminder, a reminder that it's uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, so we will want to keep that on your mind to get those uh, checks, those necessary checks done. And also we are talking about walking towards fitness. Now if you've been walking uh, the, the past couple weeks, you should well able to be able to be a part of that procession. So where there's, uh, there's Sister, uh, Sister Joan there, our, our poster child for our, our, our poster woman <laughs> for, for our walk. She's been walking and a number of you have been walking. So let's continue to do that. I know it's difficult. I ask people to, to keep track of their miles. I know that's difficult if you don't already have the equipment to do that. But the main thing is just to go out there and walk. Put your sneakers on, walk. Go to the beach, walk. Get some exercise as we walk towards wellness. Uh, the Women of Influence will have that information on their chat. I'm not exactly sure, but they do have their own special chat, so stay tuned to that for the next event for the Women of Influence. And Today's attendance is 57. We have 57 people with us. We have 10 visitors, and we have um, Sister Carol's friend Deborah, who's visiting from Guyana. It's not a first time visit, but we're glad to see you back with us. And also we have a couple other people that we haven't seen in a while that are with us today. We have um, Sister Veronica Regis, it's been a while. 
Sister Veronica? Oh, she left. Okay, well, she was here. She was here. She was here. Um, and we also have uh, Sister Caroline Chase. She's, it's been a while since she's been with us. And today's her birthday. <laughs> today's her birthday. And we have a couple other people who have birthdays. We have uh, Brother Fred. His birthday is today. Brother Fred in Canada, I know he's watching. Happy birthday, Brother Fred. And we also have uh, Ja'Kayla Sobers and An Andre Ward. Their birthdays are this week. And Haskell Goddard, his birthday is this week. And I believe that's it. The, oh, my, my grandson's birthday, his birthday is next week. So I'm going, we're going to the States to see him. His birthday will be on the 24th. So we're excited about that. So let's sing happy birthday to Sister Caroline, Brother Fred, Ja'Kayla, Andre, and Brother Goddard. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday, happy birthday to ya. May the good Lord bless you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. birthday to all of you and as I mentioned I'll be going to the States for my grandson's birthday and when I was talking to them the other day he said to my daughter he said I want to talk to granddad first so he put his hand on her mouth and we chatted so I can't wait to see him all right so we have prayer requests a number of prayer requests we have um, Sister Margaret's son-in-law, who is Fabian Colehurst, Cole um, we want to pray for him. Uh, he's in the hospital, and they were trying to determine uh, exactly what's wrong, but they haven't figured that out yet. So we pray that they do determine what his ailment is and that he uh, recovers quickly. Sister Barbie Clark has been asking for prayer, and just a prayer of protection over her and over her house and over her property, Lord. There's been some break-ins in her area, but Lord, we know that you are going to watch over and protect her, and we thank you for that. And also there's um, a Joanne Nichols that uh, is asking for prayer, um, and also the last person on my list is Kimmy. That's Peyton's cousin, little Peyton's cousin. She's not feeling well, so she wants us to pray for her as well. And we thank the pastor for his word, and we think we're so grateful that we know that the word of God that is preached here will not come back void. And we just thank for his word that told us that his message that we need to go to the people we need to communicate with people, and we need to relate to people. That means you need to be a good neighbor. If I were to talk to your neighbor, will your neighbor know that you are a Christian? If I talk to your neighbor, will they tell me that you are a person that looks out for them? So um, once you establish those relationships, it's often more easy to spread the word, to share the word that Christ has died for us. For Pastor, he challenged us. He challenged everyone here. So let's do that. Let's be about that. 
Pastor, we thank you for your word today. So now, um, now let's close the meeting, our, our service today. Let's, we're going to close our service today. And as we close, could you please stand on your feet as we say our closing prayer and benediction. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you have made a day that we can be re day that we rejoice and we can be glad. We're so glad that you are good and that your loving kindness is everlasting and that your faithfulness continues to all generation and your mercy endures forever. We rejoice today that we're able to get together and 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 pray and sing and dance and fellowship and hear a message. Lord, we're so thankful that we're in a country that we're able to do that, realizing that not everyone in this world is able to worship like we are able to. Father, we're thankful for that. And as we continue to thank you, Lord, we're thankful for the food that we have on our tables, the food that is in the refrigerator now, or even the food that is cooking in the oven right now. We thank you for being our provider. We thank you for being our healer. We thank you that you are going to heal and touch the bodies of those that we have prayed for today that came forth. Um, Fabian, um, Sister Margaret's son-in-law, uh, Joan Nichols, and even little Kimmy, Lord, we just pray that you will heal their bodies. Be their Jehovah Rapha today. And Father, we thank you for being our Jehovah Shalom, our peace, God, our peace, that we pray that our neighbors will see that even though we're going through hard times, even though we're going through a pandemic, we pray that our neighbors will see the peace that we have and want to know why and how we're so peaceful. We are because of you. We are because of the peace that you give us. Father, today we also thank you for being our Al Shaddai, our all-sufficient one, God Almighty. And Lord, we don't make these requests that you be with us and that you'll bless us. It's not because we're righteous, but it's because of your great mercy. And now, Father, we ask that you will strengthen every area of our lives, not only that we'll be blessed, so that we can be a blessing unto others and bring honor and praise and glory to your name. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day, a wonderful week. Stay safe and keep well. Oh,